Hi guys! Just finishing a text message um, here and I'll be right with you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for being here. I'm sorry I can't announce the second live of the week. My first live of the week is always on Mondays um, at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but I promised you guys I'll log on in between, you know, the unfolding that is my life on another time of the week. I just can't promise you a time. So here I am today on Thursday. If you guys don't know me, my name is Mona Cod. I run um, an account about reality creation that's mostly based on mindset and undoing the programs that are in our mind. We have a group of women that I work with. Um, it's a Facebook group and we're doing a 60 day challenge that, you know, so far has amazing results. I've been doing this for about a year on TikTok and I'm really enjoying it. And everybody who's working with me is really enjoying it. This lives, you can ask me any questions about relationship, mindsets, manifestation. What we do in 3D matters so much in terms of what we're trying to achieve. Everything that we're doing in 3D needs to align with our goals. Every time you're doing something that doesn't align with your goals, you're actually taking a step back and you're moving further away from your goals. So the reason I wanted to connect today is because last night, we had dream time with my group. So what we do is we get on, we do a little ritual before bed, just with like something simple. And um, then we sort of dream together as a group. We sort of set the intention together and we give one instruction into the formless substance. And that instruction was um, tell us what is it that's stopping us from, you know, going to the next level, whether it's financial relationships or what have you. So, um, just give me one second here. So um, basically last night we did this and a lot came out of it. And I wanted to be there for, for sort of the people that wanted to talk more about it. Here's the um, some of the comments I got. I've woken up, received clear instructions on what to do to grow my business. Wow. Um, another queen says, I've got incredibly clear next step. I trade options and I dreamt I was talking to someone about trading. And then she's actually telling us exactly what she she found out in her dream, but it's too personal to share. Um, I've had myself a dream that showed me a limitation that I know I have that I'm working to overcome. It's one of this more primordial fears. And it's all about understanding what programs are running in the subconscious in order to overcome them and move to the next step. Now, what happens is we may do a lot of work in the process of, hey, I can change my future and I can change my circumstances. And I, all of this can change when I set clear intention and I do the work every day. I am consistent about it. But what happens is if your paradigm is extremely strong, like for a lot of people it is, right? Because it's been programmed by what you've observed with your parents, by what the school system has trained you, and just by observing the world, which is negative. So if your paradigm has been programmed that way, what happens is you, you can't really, all your work is kind of falling flat on that paradigm. So it's so important we understand the paradigm and we move on from there. So this is um, this is sort of where I want to stay. I don't know if there's anybody on this live that um, has is part of the group or not because I didn't announce this live. So I don't know if anybody has uh, has joined. Um, in any event, let me know what questions you have, where you are in your manifestation journey, what's going on. Hi, Paulina, how are you? Um, what's going on with you? What's new this week? I will read a testimonial as well that I received um, yesterday. And I was really, really happy for this queen. And I'm trying to open the window, but I can't right now. It's the group is in the link in my bio. I'm not sure if you're familiar with my work, but um, we have a group about 200 people that are doing this work together. And we're riding on an energetic signature that's, you know, in my opinion, propelling us forward. So I want to read a testimonial just to give you some inspiration. In the group, we do post everything that happens to us that's as a result of this work. It's important you attribute what happens as a result of this work just to um, give the universe clear instruction that this is sort of I'm doing this and therefore you're returning this and then work to clarify the instructions as you go step by step. 
So this queen says, hi, Mona, I'm already on day 15 of the challenge. I have a 60 day challenge in my bio. And boy, do I feel like a different person already. First of all, I would really like to thank you for this program. I can see myself following, following it for life. The first few days, nothing serious happened. I only found the key from the previous challenge. On week one week in, I lost all of my energy. I got sick. I cried so many times without any reason, even though my life is great. And I had stressful dreams, a lot of resistance, but I continued the work. So this is an important point I want to stop and tell you. So one week in, she lost her energy one week into doing the challenge. She got sick. She cried so many times, even though her life is great and she had stressful dreams, but she continued the work. What happens when you start this work is your ego will revolt against you, right? Your ego and your energetic system, if it's, if it's like completely different than what you're trying to manifest, it will fight for its survival with all it has. Yes, it can make you sick temporarily. It can make you have horrible dreams. It can show you everything, all of the ways in which you are not what you're doing, what you're writing down in the challenge, right? So everything that is not that, it will be like, I'm not that, I'm not that. No, you're not beautiful. You're not wanted. You're not, your life is not going great. Your life, and it will show you, it will revolt against you. So she knows this. So she continued the work. Then she says, one week and a half and my current boyfriend that I've been together three months confesses that he wants to marry me. And whenever I want, he will come up with a ring. He even sent me a reel of engagement rings to pick from. I got scared, to be honest. I knew he is very family oriented and wants to get married, but I wasn't expected that to happen so soon. So I changed my goal in the challenge from to be married to to be in a relationship. <laughs> Guys, pay attention to what you put in the challenge because when I say I want to be married and then the guy you've dated three months saying I want to marry you and uh, here's a real love engagement rings pick one you can't be like whoa 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 I didn't mean I want to get married <laughs> that's too funny then she's saying, I'm not sure if I'm messing up the goals. I also hope it will not affect the relationship. He's the most loving, protecting and providing man I've ever met. So remember, the advice that I give my queens is date a PPP man, protector, provider, prioritizer. So this is what I like to hear, protector and provider. I do want to marry him, but not now, she says. However, the biggest shock came last Sunday, she says. I was out with my best friend. We are talking about my ex because I was in a toxic relationship for three years and it cost me a lot of time and effort to overcome and find myself. So I was explaining to her that after a lot of inner work, I'm finally back. I don't even feel hate or anger about my ex, but I still have two physical things of his, his old laptop and a camera that he gave me during the relationship that I feel I should have returned to him. So I told her exactly this. I'm not going to force it, but if I have to cut any cords I might still have with him, the universe will bring him to me. I'll talk to him and return his things. So she's feeling like she wants to return this laptop and camera. She wants to return these things, but she doesn't want to contact this boyfriend that she hadn't talked to for three years. She puts in bracket, I have had zero contact with him for the past three years. I've blocked him. And the idea of seeing him or talking to him was stressing me out. Obviously, you can't contact somebody after three years and be like, I want to give you back your camera and your computer. We were sitting at the bar to have a drink. And after 20 minutes that I said this, he entered the bar. I was speechless. My friend too. She called me a witch. So what did I... So. I did what I had to do. I'm returning to him his things this week. I feel so relieved and free. I can't even describe the feeling. I do really feel like a different person now. Can't wait for what's coming next because I feel like I have unlocked something inside of me. Wish you and the group the best life ever. I Listen, for I know, I know. For some people, this this work will produce immediate results. The results will be like, the results it produces, it will actually, you'll be shocked about how some of these things you didn't even like, you put in there, you want to get married, you put in there, but when you're faced with these things, you realize, hey, hang on a second, I made this happen, but did I really want this? 
right? She puts in there, I want to be married. The universe returns to her right away because for some people it works like immediately right away. It's just, it's just how fast they can align themselves and ride on the group energy and, and this work. And then she's like, no, 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 I got to change that to be in a relationship. I find that hilarious. Queen, first of all, congratulations. You know, I would work on following this alignment into a very, very clear direction of that which you want. And if all you want is this relationship that you have right now with, with your boyfriend, I would continue to just envision it unfolding without an ultimate goal in mind. So I would just see myself in his arms. I would just see us traveling, laughing. Um, just keep this image, satisfying relationship. I want to, the goal can be, I want to deepen my relationship with Mark, um, if you don't want to put an ultimate goal of I want to be married right now, right? Because it seems for you, the moment you think something had happened and you have two instances here, the moment you thought of marriage, your boyfriend wants to propose, the moment you think of your ex now, he shows up in a bar after you haven't talked to him for three years. Um, so, you know, just, just be very, very careful with this work. Remember, guys, that's for everybody. Just because you can manifest something doesn't mean it will bring you happiness. And somebody in the group put this note yesterday. She says, even though I'm feeling like I'm manifesting right now, um, with each manifestation, I get less excited. Why is that? So I don't know if anybody had this um, experience in the group or, or, you know, if it, you think you want something, you get it, and maybe it's still something you want, but it doesn't really produce that feeling in you that you originally thought it would. Do you know what I'm talking about? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? And you got to understand, happiness does not come from the things that you're manifesting. It doesn't. The only reason we're manifesting them is because we think, you know, that they're what are going, is going to bring us happiness. But ultimately... Only a, a life of peace and harmony and freedom, freedom in terms of, let's say, your schedule, freedom in terms of not feeling stressed out over the bills, freedom in terms of of you feel loved and you don't have to look for somebody, freedom in terms of, you know, you can go in the world and live the life you want to live. It is, it's not a money related issue once your basic needs have been met, once a reasonable amount of needs have been met. And in that feeling, if you stay in gratitude in this feeling like, wow, you know, my life is really good, your life will continue to get better and better. And your affirmations, especially if you're doing our challenge, your affirmations will be inspired every day by the formless substance that's going to look to keep you in alignment with this trajectory of your life, right? Trajectory of your life. Let me see um, if we had some questions. Uh, Paulina, everything's going well. You're about to start going on dates. Yes, I talked to a queen yesterday and she's um, she started with us last summer and she's having a great dating experience. Now she's looking for a serious relationship, but she said her dating experiences have changed so much since she changed her mindset about what to expect from men. Guys, only date PPP men right? We know what that is. Protectors, providers, prioritizers. Um, the ego is still fighting me. Yeah, the ego <laughs> for some people will be harder to, to replace it than others. The ego is an energetic system and it has its own, its own sense of self almost. It has its own desire to live, will to live. Like any energetic form, it wants to live more. Whether that energetic form is expressed in 3D or not, as a body or as whether it's not expressed, this energetic forms have the need to live on. That's that's what's happening. But it's not that you can't overcome it. Um careful with what you wish for, yeah. Can somebody tell me why I feel powerless when I started to think on higher frequencies? Well, it's this thing that I am describing right now. The cords and connections you have with 3D don't want to be severed. There is a lot of people do feel like, like that when other people have placed cords in them. So if you had connections with many people, if it's hard for you to break relationships very clean, if you're still in touch with a lot of your exes or family members who are toxic, if if you're a type of person like that, that can't really make a clean break from the past, you will feel powerless when you're trying to connect to a higher frequency because the higher frequency is pulling you up and away. Those cords tighten and they don't want to be broken. Get it? Um... 
how did you begin your journey would be what would be the first step i began my journey in 2014 but you don't it doesn't have to take you 10 years or what i mean i've seen obviously i've seen results along the way but it doesn't have to take you now this information is available you can learn from so many teachers and coaches you can read so many books i have a book recommendation in the link in my bio for basic books and then for more advanced books you can do our program and be part of a group that's doing this. I wish these resources were available when I started. Um, you can shorten this journey by a lot. For, to manifest a dream body, I need to diet and exercise. You need to think of this differently. You need to think of your body differently. You need to understand that the energetic scaffolding you have around your body is what shapes the body. It's not the diet and exercise. And when you learn how to work with this energetic scaffolding, what's going to happen is your body is not going to want to do certain things like eat sweets or um, eat too much. You know, it will it will stop you from eating too much. It will want to take the breaks that will automatically make you lose weight do you see what i mean people are thinking of their body as you know something that needs to be beat into submission right and it's not it's not that i mean you can beat your body into submission but very few people can can sustain that long term what you want to do is to define yourself as, you know, a slim person or whatever you want to look like, a voluptuous person, if that's what you want. And then stay in that mindset and ask, what is the next step? What is the next step for me to do this? How to ask the universe, do we have to be grateful for things that that haven't happened yet? It, it just depends on where you are in your journey. Gratitude is always important. Um, you know, if let's say you want to manifest a husband, what you need to, to do is not only be grateful for your life as a married woman, right? In terms of when you grieve gratitude, I give gratitude that my husband exists, that I'm going to, I know he's about to materialize in my life, that I know he's the ideal man for me. And I know this is the life I'm going to have with him. But also at the same time, your 3D actions have to align with this goal. This is why I focus on relationships, on the way we handle relationships with, you know, anybody really, your boss, your coworkers, the men you date, what have you. I feel like I've lived a gratitudeless life. Yeah. If you feel like you need more gratitude in your life, that's an easy fix, queen, right? You just start giving gratitude for what you have. I'm beautiful. I'm slim. Um, I have enough money to pay for all of my expenses. Um, I have, I can enjoy life because I have all of my five senses are working perfectly. I have a lot of life left ahead of me. I can make a difference in other people's worlds. I can have enough to give to others. I can take care of animals. I'm very, very grateful about what's about to unfold for me, about all my wishes coming through. And, and sort of it's, it's flowing. The future is flowing from what you're grieving gratitude for today. Can you just in one sentence tell us how to manifest anything? Are you guys serious? Like, are you guys serious when, when you're asking these questions? Like, it's, is that a joke or is it like serious, you know? Can I just open a portal and without me staying the same person, being myself with, I have created this past that I don't like. But somehow, in one sentence right now, I'm going to enter a different future. But I'm, I'm not going to change. I'm not going to work on myself at all. I'm not, I'm not going to give to others. I'm not going to be connected to a group energy. I'm not going to stay in this line of thought. I just want to do whatever I'm doing today. Leave me alone. Just give me one sentence to manifest everything. Just one sentence. Abracadabra. Try that. Let's see. Um, I was listening to your older lives. You explained something about being grateful or appreciative. Yeah, I'm, I don't remember. We had so many lives. All of my lives are posted on YouTube. Um, guys, I, I don't know if you know this about me. I'm a, a heavy reader. So I read a lot of books. I would say I read at least two new books per month. 
And, and so I express a lot of ideas in a very concise way. Like everything that I learned, I wanted to share with the world. This is what happened, you know, in terms of starting this account. So, you know, when you follow my account, um, you can watch all my videos because none of my videos are fillers. They're all different types of information. I have information on all areas of life and it's not like, oh, just assume that it's done for you. Just assume that you are that. It's easy to say that, right? It's easy to say, um, I, I just assumed I'm a multimillionaire and I'm married to another multimillionaire. <laughs> and then what? But I feel the same and I do the same things every day, but I just assume. How the hell can you assume that? You can't, right? The moment you go to the grocery store um, and you start looking the prices of groceries, your subconscious remembers you're not a millionaire because millionaires don't look at the price of the groceries. They just buy whatever they want. When they don't feel like cooking, they just order. They just go out. When do you know what I mean? If they feel like going to Europe, they just maybe they check their business schedule, but then they just book a flight. So there's no way you can assume you're a millionaire. There's no way you can assume there's if if you have a history of bad relationships, are you really able to trust and envision yourself in a perfect relationship day one? Do you even know what that looks like if you haven't seen it in your parents, if you haven't experienced it ever? right? Like it's a lot of searching. The people who are doing it really fast, like the queen in the story I just read that the guy proposed to her within like three months and she put her goal as to be married. Did you notice how she started her story? My life is great. I have no reason to, let's say, cry. I have no reason. She starts from a point of great. Depends where you're starting from. If you're starting from a point where you've always been treated like shit, it's going to take you more work than a person who's been treated like a princess, but maybe she just wasn't ready or she might need just a tweak in her behavior. But you might need a lot. You might need, don't, don't look at anybody and be like, oh yeah, it always happens to other people. Just always say, if her, then me. I am currently listening to the audiobook, A Happy Pocket Full of Money. That book is on my list of, of reading. Um, most of the books, I think, are available um, to listen to, but it's not the same thing as when you read it. If you're a visual person, you know, I read every book with pen and paper, and I just highlight, I just underline, I just, because the brain really, like, if you listen to something as if it's entertainment, as if it's a podcast, it's not likely you'll remember anything two days later or five days later. So this is the difference between books and audiobooks, in my opinion. Paulina's experiencing relationship stuff blocks. Yeah, everybody has blocks in different areas. I want to know if anybody, is anybody here from my group and who has dreamt something uh, last night in our dream time together? If you're a visual person, you do need to read books. It's different if you listen. I try listening to audiobooks and honestly, like, I just realized, like, oh, yeah, this makes sense. And then, like, two days later, I completely forget what it said. But when I read books, it's totally different. But you don't have to read so many books like I do because most people wouldn't have the time for that. You can just, this is why you should look to follow people that would give you a summary and an alignment with how you should live your life in order to achieve those results. How can we change our subconscious? Consistent work, daily work, diligence, understanding and analyzing your dreams, understanding and analyzing your sub, uh, your your patterns. Why is it that you do what you do? Um, understanding your fears. Here's a list that I talked to. I think in a live last week. Um, the fear and shame and guilt. I'll just give you a few pointers that we talked about. My lives are posted. I think this is from last Thursday. Uh, accepting the current circumstances without prolonging them. And I'm, I talked around it. Holding the vision. The more things you have in your mind, the less likely to, you are to manifest something specific. There's this idea of upper limits that your current persona only has a certain amount of goodness that they can accept in their lives. But as you change who you are, that amount of goodness can be increased, right? So as your self-image develops, your upper limit will automatically increase. You should check your upper limits it, with money, with relationships. Like your upper limit is the point where you'd feel uncomfortable with what would be given to you. So let's say if it's money, 
If you're currently making 50 bucks an hour, start doubling that and see when you make when you start becoming uncomfortable. So other than a lottery win, you know, if somebody wanted to pay you 100 bucks an hour, would you take the job or would you feel like, hmm, maybe just this whole thing is a scam. I'm not really worth 100 bucks an hour. Okay, if you think that's great, I, I always knew I'm worth 100 bucks an hour, double it, 200 bucks an hour. Would you apply for that job that's 200 bucks an hour? Right. And then you keep going and then you understand at some point you value yourself at a certain financial point. And this is what the universe is returning to you. And the same with the relationship. Right. If you meet a guy who checks all the boxes and treats you like a princess and opens the car door, do this exercise in your imagination and see, do you get anxiety right away? Do you be like, OK, I'm going to have this for a while, but he's not really going to stay with me because, you know, I have nothing to really offer a man like that. I have, is that a thought in your mind? So how to undo your subconscious programming is, is the second step. The first step is understanding what your limits, the limits of your subconscious programming is. Let's see. Um, where do we find a book list? Just click the link in my bio. And it in the link, it will be like, a click button that says books and products I recommend. Um, hey, I had a question one time. You did a mission on life where you are being a key. Okay, to your reality. You mean a challenge, a manifestation challenge? Okay. Did that, but it didn't look exactly that. That still counts. Um, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't be able to. It doesn't, it doesn't seem relevant. Let me let me know if there was a more relevant question around your ability to manifest. The challenges that I give my group to do are more like for fun. I mean, we had many challenges that people enjoy manifesting because I had a challenge one time, $2,000. And I, we got a lot of people manifesting an extra $2,000. The craziest story from that was somebody um, stayed one month, their rent was exactly $2,000 on their deposit. So they didn't pay for the last month of their lease, ended their lease, left. And then the landlord sent them a refund on their deposit, which was exactly $2,000. But she didn't pay the rent for that month. So she was figuring she's staying on the deposit. And I guess the landlord's office made a mistake and mailed her back her deposit after she had moved out. So I, I thought that it was like, okay, you never can figure out the how. If I give you a manifestation, $2,000, and you probably expect maybe, you know, you get a pay increase or you get a lottery ticket. You wouldn't think, but it always comes in a way that will leave you in awe as to the how. As to how creative the universe can get. I'm just going to open the door a bit. It's really hot. You know? As it's crazy like and you know you know the synchronicities that can be obtained in doing this work the reason i give this challenges is because people just their fate is built on how these challenges are coming on how it's like oh my god you said to do this and i did this and i got it and so the same way i can get anything else right the same thing i can get anything else don't forget Collective consciousness is a big part of how we manifest. It is very difficult to go against collective consciousness. And collective consciousness right now is negative. Collective consciousness is all about single dome, economic collapse. Uh, young people don't really have a future because they can't buy homes. It's a hookup culture. That, those are the messagings that if you listen to the collective, the collective will give you. So it's up to you to swim against those messages and to say, you know, this may apply to the majority. I don't know. I'm not going to look at the statistics, but I'm not a statistic and I don't have to. It doesn't have to happen to me. It doesn't. I don't need to be part of this collective wave and the way it's going. Right. Because I, I define my own reality, my own life. And luckily right now, there's examples from people from all walks of life succeeding in life or getting married late in life or, you know, having babies at like 40 years old or, you know, so you can just look at those people and be like, who is like me based on my social position, uh, my skin tone, my age, my possibilities. 
Has there been a person like me who succeeded, who's gotten what I wanted? You only need one example and you'll find it. Right before, before we had access to the internet, it was a lot harder. It was only if you knew a person like that. But now you can find an example of successful people in any age range, any walk of life, any background. And you should really only compare yourself. If you need to compare yourself, I don't recommend comparing yourself. But you should, you should only comparing yourself with people who have the same background as you, are the same age. You know, if you're 45, don't look at um, Pilates models who are 22 years old demonstrating how the body should look. It's, it's, it's sort of like this. Stay in the area where someone like you has succeeded. I want to see. How do you recover from imposter syndrome after getting your manifestations? You have to um, reconcile the person that has gotten the manif manifestation with the person that you are. And if there is a discrepancy, do everything you can to correct the discrepancy in terms of your intention. So let's say I got a job that's completely outside of my skill set. And I done it with, you know, just assuming it, being the Lulu, impressing people in an interview, my confidence, what have you. Right. But I went for it and they gave it to me. So now I understand I have imposter syndrome, but now I understand. And when I show up for that job, I'm like, how, what is the fastest path from me to get from where I am inside and my skill set and my knowledge to what is expected of me? So you have to push through with, with wanting to be the person that got the manifestation. Because that's how you got it. For a few seconds, for the length of time that is required in the formless substance, you were able to be that person. That's how you got it. So you know it's possible. So now you're going to catch up socially. And you're going to catch up intellectually. And you're going to catch up emotionally or what's required of you. One thing I realize when I detach from the manifestation is when it actually shows up in 3D. Always. If you don't detach, it's not going to happen, right? If you don't detach, don't bother manifesting or doing all this work or don't bother, you know? If, like I tell my group, if you want a million dollars, guys, everybody knows what to do to get a million dollars, no? Everybody. You, you just need 20 to 25 years to do it. But the information is out there. There's stocks. There's shorting stocks. There's real estate investments. You can start with small there's all sorts of avenues. You can learn online. You can turn YouTube. The only reason you'd be manifesting it is because you don't want to wait 25 years. <laughs> right? So you got to let go of the how. Because you know the how. You know the how. You're just not willing to do the how in 3D. That's how you have to rationalize this. I don't know the how. How I'm going to get to have this life while I'm still young. While I'm still enjoying it. Having a million dollars at 35 is different than having it at 80. Right? So you have to, you, oh yeah, when, when you stop obsessing or checking 3D, checking 3D is one of the most destructive things you can do for your manifestation. I don't know if you guys know this, okay? I don't know if, if checking to see if he texted you or checking to see what your matches are after you just manifesting, you're like, I'm married and I'm, but really you're on a dating app, checking to see if there's anybody there, excuse me, who matches a, a husband like image seeing there's nobody will revert you back to the state where you were so there was no point to this work that you've done because you just reversed it right the moment you check because when you check you're telling the universe how it's going to be done it's going to be done by me logging into an app and seeing immediately there's a man like that it's going to be done, you know, I'm manifesting a million dollars. I'm going to go to my bank account to see if I have it yet. <laughs> so um, that's that's the thing. Don't check 3D. Just, just trust that it will show up, but the timing is not up to you. And your only work in the delay is to shorten the timing. The only way to do that is by staying focused on your goal and not doing anything in 3D that's against your goal. What does it mean? That means if your goal is to be married, you cannot go around having one night stands with guys who are not marriage material. 
right? So what you do in 3D matters because what you do in 3D is an instruction you give into the formless substance again and again. So you can affirm I'm wanted and desired and I'm the only option for all guys. But then you go with the first guy that um, can just say hello and you just go for him because he's good looking. He hasn't offered you anything. He hasn't fulfilled those conditions to make you feel valuable and wanted and desired more than physically. You go for him. So that's like making another affirmation. And that affirmation is I'm not valuable. Anyone can have me. And I'm just there to provide enjoyment for other people. Right? Do you, do you guys understand that? That what you do in 3D is an affirmation. Um, the 3D really is a shadow of your previous thoughts. Exactly. The 3D, whatever's happening in your life right now, like my last video from Bernardo Katzrup, I think is his last name. He's um, a philosopher now, but he's a scientist and quantum scientist. And, um, you know, he, he talks about this reality being a dashboard. Like when you're flying an airplane, a pilot only sees the dashboard. And the dashboard tells the pilot exactly what's going on outside of the plane. Exactly all the conditions as they're going on, right? But he's not looking outside. He's only seeing the dashboard. And he's only using the dashboard to interpret what's going on outside. And so our reality being the dashboard, it tells us what's behind the scene. And what's behind the scene is this larger person that we are, right? So if you don't like what's on the dashboard, the way pilots do it is they course correct. If the dashboard shows them something that's not aligned with their goal of getting somewhere or with making the plane go 200 miles an hour, then they will make adjustments. So if you don't make adjustments to, to behind the scene, to, to match, to, to bring your dashboard to something you want to see by accessing what's behind, then there's no point. I mean, you manifested big time last couple of years. Congratulations. A lot of manifesting is luck, like fishing. I disagree. You don't have to be intelligent to manifest, by the way. Let's see. Don't check 3D. How do you stop being discouraged with how long it takes? You, um, Every time you think about it, you just say it's going to come in the perfect timing. And you remember that if you had that feeling of discouragement, that's going to prolong it. So there's no point to have that feeling of discouragement. The feeling of discouragement is an instruction in the form of substance. It's always a refresh. I'm glad. Paulina, you've been doing the work quite a bit and I'm proud of you. You're, you're really like tuning into the lives. You're contributing and um, you're making changes. And there's no way you won't have what you're manifesting. I really want to manifest a physical glow up and become financially abundant. Yeah, do the 60 day challenge in my uh, bio. Like the majority of people on this group, um, everybody's had physical glow ups. So my challenge focuses on all areas of life. Um, see if there was something else that I missed. If not, I have to keep it a little bit shorter today. <laughs> Tell us about the day stop the rain. I, I can do this quite easily, but not in an immediate timing. So I, I said in the video, if I leave the house and I want to do something with the true intention, and I say by the time, like I always give the universe a time, by the time I get there, I want these conditions, then it always happens. I would say like nine out of 10 times, it always happens. Um, and the moment I got in my car and I started doing the video, you guys could see that, you know, it was like in, in real time. But my intention was set when I left the house. I don't know, if you look at that video, I don't know why people are so fascinated with it. At least 100 people on those comments said, I remember being able to do this as a kid. At least a hundred people. They said, yeah, this was easy for me when I was growing up and manifesting this and this and that. It was mostly physical changes in 3D world, not necessarily a wish. 
But manifesting natural changes in the physical world was easy for me when I was growing up. Don't you think it's interesting that hundreds of people have had that experience and have said that? Um, and, and they're like, I don't know what happened to my ability to, to manifest. Do you suggest giving a time limit to the universe? Guys, if something doesn't happen within a reasonable amount of time, you're doing something wrong. So um, I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think you. You definitely won't upset the universe by setting a time limit. I don't know if the time will be met or not. But if it doesn't happen in a reasonable amount of time, you're doing something wrong. So one example of this is getting a job, getting married, right? If I'm single right now and I say I'm going to be married by the end of the month, that's a problem, right? Because <laughs> Me getting married between now and, you know, March 31st is not a reasonable amount of time. And the universe that's operating mostly on collective consciousness will not allow me to do that. And if it will allow me to do that, it would probably be to my detriment. So if, but if I put in there, I'm single now and I shall be married by the end of 2025, that seems reasonable. That if end of 2025 comes, you're still single, you're doing something wrong. If you're looking for a job for more than four to six months, your ideal job, your ideal job, like we have testimonials in the group from this week, two queens that manifested ideal job situations that they wanted, exactly what they wanted. So I'm not saying get any job in six months. Anybody can do that. You know, you can go work at Starbucks. I'm saying if you haven't gotten your ideal job in six months, something wrong with you in, in terms of your thinking process and what you're doing. So as long as your expectations on timing are reasonable, I don't think you'll have any problems. Mm, let's see. Oh, Zora, you always knew it was possible in terms of the rain and yeah. Yeah, but it's not really useful, right? Like it's not all of this kind of manifestations of, you know, what's useful is actually creating a platform for your life where you have all the things that that give you the freedom to function the way you want in 3D. And again, it's not a good thing to think that you need mil millions of dollars to do that because then you're putting conditions and pressures and resistance. You, you really don't. You need a house that's paid for or a way to pay for it that, you know, it's not stressing you out every day. You need, you need a certain parameters that, you know, you get to do the work that you want to do. You should want to work. You should want to contribute somehow to the world. Or if you're already a multimillionaire, you should do volunteer work and you should want to contribute somehow. Um, and, and, and so this basis for, for life, for a good life, should be the aim of your manifestation journey. And more will be added onto you. More that you can't even envision now, right? You want to be a mother to children, right? You just stay in that thought process and the how will come to you slowly. I love that, Carla. New affirmation. I am willing to release any error in my beliefs that is blocking me from my good. Well, the dream time last night was about dissolving the subconscious patterns of our subconscious, right? But it has to be done. It can't just be done once and be like, oh, where is it? Why hasn't it happened? Why do I still have this fear? You're going to work with that fear until it dissolves. It's different for everybody. How long it takes, how you're supporting that fear. Maybe you're working in your meditation, in your writing, in your affirmation. You're working to dissolve a certain fear. You already know you have it. But if in day-to-day -day life, you're acting out that fear, like let's say you're putting up with a job where you're being humiliated and you absolutely hate it, but you're going there anyways and you're not taking steps in 3D to change that situation, um, you know, then, then all that work that you're doing inside your mind, it's not, it needs to be supported by your 3D actions and how your interactions with other people. You know, you need to say, no, I will no longer, okay, yeah, this 3D reality is a reflection of my past thoughts and patterns, but I'm no longer willing to tolerate it. Okay, and I don't know how it needs to change, but here's my goals. Here's how, here's where I'm going to be imminently. And 3D just needs to follow. I'm not accepting the situation anymore. I'm not accepting this treatment anymore. I am just as worthy as find a person who has what you want. Okay, and without jealousy, without, you know, 
this is why it has to be somebody like you. So without, without the sense of like, oh, if they got it, there's less for me. Just be like, if her, then me. The way it was given to her, it needs to be given to me. You understand? Last week, I got the apartment and a bonus and a raise at work. Ladies, do the work. Thank you, Paulina. Do the work. Listen to these lives. Go on YouTube. All my lives are available. Um, stick with one line of thought, though. Whatever you decide to do, stick with one line of thought. Um, there's a lot of information about the law of assumption. That's not really what I teach. I teach more um, group energy, undoing of programs. And I, I find the law of assumption, it's so simple, but it's really difficult to implement for the reasons we discussed before. It's really difficult for the majority of people. That's why you saw there was such a surge in the law of assumption content and videos. And people got so sick of it because people were like, okay, yeah, I'm just assuming, but nothing's happening. Yeah. Because you can't assume it. <laughs> You're not actually assuming it. Very few people can assume a different circumstance that than what their senses tell them. Very few people. So don't beat yourself up over it. Just just look inside now. Now that you've tried it the easy way and it didn't work, look inside and see what needs to be corrected. See, keep your mind of where you want to be. You know? Okay, guys, I'm going to let you go. Been like uh, 15 minutes. I got to go. I got to be somewhere by 3.15. Put your hands together for I am a winner. So I am a winner is the tapping which regulates the nervous system or just prompts it to reset. And I use the affirmation, I am a winner. One breath. I am a winner. 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 I am a winner.